this is uh, a challenge to think about relying on the people that you lead and serve. At least in my experience, leaders often have trouble relying on the people that they're leading for one main reason, and that is that they don't really know the difference between doing and leading. Doing and leading. You know, if any of you are leaders in the room, I'd wager that at one point you were really good doers. Particularly in the creative fields, this happens all the time, that you're in some sort of position where you're really good at doing something. You have mad technical skills in some fashion, and people recognize that and then give you the opportunity to step up into a leadership role. Now, if you've been in this situation, you may find that when you get to that leadership role, some of those dispositions and abilities that served you really well as a doer no longer serve you well in your leadership role. In fact, sometimes they're revealed to be liabilities and they make it difficult for you to lead. And that's because the leadership role is very different than a doer role. Let, let me explain a little bit with a couple images here. Uh, this is a picture of a consummate doer, if you will. Here she is, she's, she's equipped, she's ready to do the job, she's focusing on what needs to be done. In this case, she's building the church experience, the worship experience for people that are coming on Sunday. Um, I've heard that term several times today that Sunday's coming, so she's prepared for this. And boy, she has her eye on the prize, right? She's focused on the outcome. And doers are always focused on the outcome because that's what they need to accomplish. They need to get that done. And, and doers are distinguished by their desire to, to do whatever it takes. They'll roll up their sleeves and they'll get it done. They, they amass whatever knowledge they need, they take greater responsibility, and they commit their own personal energy more and more to the task until it's done. Does that sound familiar? Okay, now, that's a great doer, but that's not necessarily a great leader. Because when you're a leader, it doesn't look like this. Um, you may be focusing on that uh, end result, but there, there is this one other issue here. You've got an impediment between the two of you. There you go. Um, they're people. You know, you had your eye on the prize. You, you knew what needed to be done. You were ready to address it. You were going to work and do whatever it took. But now there are these other people involved. And if, if you are continuing to focus on the end result as a leader, you're gonna have a problem because you're gonna run roughshod over your people. When we talk about for you leaders relying more on the people that they lead and serve, what we're really doing is talking about how they think about power. For you leaders are focused on empowering the people that they lead, literally giving them the power to affect things, empowering them. Now, if this is your perspective, it's very difficult to empower your people because they often are revealed as impediments. They're barriers between you and what you're trying to affect. Now, this is the key. Doers are known by their direct impact on results, on what they do themselves, the things they touch and handle and affect themselves. Leaders, however, are known by their indirect impact on results. Because a great leader's perspective doesn't look like this. A great leader's perspective actually looks like this. They can no longer focus simply on the outcome or the results. They need to focus on the people because, look, if, if you're a doer, your fingerprints are all over the results. But if you're a leader, you don't get to touch the results. Your impact is on the people, right, on the doers. You have to be very sensitive to how you're giving them the power to affect things. If there's something wrong in the results, if something's off track, something's not going well, you actually have to resist the urge to roll up your own sleeves and get busy because if you do that, it's likely you're inadvertently stealing the power from the people that you lead. You know, there was probably a time in your life as a doer that you were required to stay late, work longer, and do downright heroic things in the interest of pulling off what needed to be done. That might have been difficult and all, but truth be told, you know, you probably took some pride in being the kind of doer that could do that, right? That would do whatever it takes. In fact, some of those difficult times at this point have probably emerged as even sort of your own badges of honor, those sorts of trophies you hold of that time, then you did whatever it took. That's a great idea, a great perspective for a doer, but as a leader, you have to remember that those moments now are your people's moments. And you have to give them the opportunity to shine, them the opportunity to step up and take care of business while you step back and take care of them. That's the difference in perspective. Now, some of you are probably thinking at this point, but wait a minute, how can I, how can I step back? As a leader, 
uh, am I not supposed to be the example and show people what it means to work hard and to get in there and do whatever it takes? And I would say, yes, you need to be the model, but if you're in a leadership role, you need to rely on your people, and that means you need to be the model in a different fashion. Let me share an example of where I learned this in my own life. Um, I was leading a team of people in a university setting, and we were uh, about to give an enormous report. This is, this is a big study, a report that we've been working on for a couple of weeks. It was the day before we were to do this major presentation in, pr in front of all the senior leadership of the university, and it promised to make a big difference in where the university would go in the future. A lot riding on this, right? And at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, the day before this needed to be done, we discovered an error. Now, this is one of those mistakes that when you discover it, there's a little part of you that, that almost wishes you didn't discover it, right? Because this was a big deal. This wasn't something we could look past. It wasn't just a typo. This was a flaw in some of the assumptions that we had made in our strategic planning. And it meant that everything downstream now needed to be changed. And we had very limited time to do it. As I sat there and kind of came to grips with the reality of this, I... I started kind of battening down the hatches. I, I, the, my inner doer was rising up in me, and I thought to myself, okay, time to roll up my sleeves and get busy. I was about to call my wife and tell her, look, I can't come home tonight because this was the sort of thing that was going to require work all through the night. And I was getting ready to do that when one of the team leads came into my office. And I was about to tell her, hey, you're going to have to adjust the schedules, et cetera. And she said, hey, we've already adjusted the schedules. Everybody's planning, here to stay, planning to stay here all night and we've got this. I thought to myself, well, this may be one of those gut check moments. Am I a doer and am I a leader? I thought to myself, all right, I'm a leader. In this case, I need to support her and I need to, to go home. So at five o'clock, I packed up my things and I walked out to the car to go home. And this was one of the hardest things I've ever done before. Every, every inner doer in me was rebelling because my whole staff was there working. And they were getting ready to stay there all night to prepare this while I went home. Now, I'd like to, to tell you I was doing this because I'm so wise and I understood the difference between doing and leading. But the truth is, at the moment, it wasn't that. It was that when that leader told me that she'd rescheduled thing and she said, we got this, there was something in her eye that also said, and we don't need you all up in our business. <laughs> okay. I really needed that because, frankly, I didn't have the courage to step away. I wanted to get in. I wanted to get involved. I wanted to do things. But, you know, my people needed to do things. And when she told me, we've got this, that was the voice of a leader who felt empowered, who felt like she would be able to handle this, whatever it took. And any effort of mine to get involved and help was only going to steal that opportunity and take some of that power away. So I did the only thing I could do. I went home, enjoyed the evening with my wife. And then about midnight, I came back. I didn't come back to roll up my sleeves. I didn't come back to get busy. I came back with the biggest stack of pizzas I could carry, right? Because look, if you're a for you leader, you need to rely on your people, but that doesn't mean you back away and let them twist. Your job is to support them as they exercise the power that you've given them. So I came back for about an hour or so. I patted backs, I handed out pizza. I did all I could not to actually ask about the work that was going on or get involved. And then I went home and went to bed. When I came back the next day, the project was done. I had an incredibly tired staff, but in spite of their fatigue, you could see they were kind of walking tall because they'd done what it took. They had what it takes. And I got out of their way to let them do it. So if you're thinking about being a for you leader, one of the first things that you need to do is commit yourself to relying more on the people that you lead and serve. In spite of the fact that you could do the work, you've got skills, sometimes you've even got more skills than some of the other people. Look, your greatest concern is in exercising your own skills and advancing yourself and showing your own power. It's about giving power to those that you lead.